All right, next we're going to be talking about human influence on the biosphere. Um, and that is going to start with ozone depletion. So ozone, or O3, so three oxygen molecules, is a naturally occurring gas that is vital for life on Earth. So um, ozone is in the upper atmosphere, um, and it screens out most of the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Um, humans who are exposed to ultraviolet radiation may suffer from things um, like skin cancers, cataracts, um, or decreased resistance to disease. Um, but humans are not the only thing impacted by UV light. Um, UV light is also damaging to plants and phytoplankton, um, which are the producers in the biosphere, and uh, they are also affected by those high levels of UV radiation. So the ozone layer um, acts sort of as a protective um, layer of gas in the atmosphere uh, to absorb harmful UV radiation. So basically, um, the ozone layer serves as a global sunscreen, um, protecting all life on Earth from being exposed to harmful ultraviolet radiation. The ozone layer, um, oh sorry, humans, have caused destruction to the ozone layer um, by releasing harmful chemicals into the atmosphere. Um, you guys are probably familiar with the idea of carbon footprint. Um, that's pretty much um, the research as it pertains to us damaging the ozone layer. Um, the most important of these harmful ozone-destroying chemicals um, are known as chlorofluorocarbons, so, or CFCs. So CFCs, um, this was a while back in history, but they were once thought to be harmless. And then, so they were used in a variety of different products. Um, you can find, or CFCs are found in the following. So um, coolants in refrigerators and air conditioners um, used as propellant in aerosol spray cans. Um, and they are used to make plastic um, foam products and, of course, to clean electronic equipment. Um, so... Uh, why these CFCs are so damaging um, is basically they'll make it up to the upper atmosphere, and the CFC acts as a catalyst. A catalyst means it speeds something up, so speeding up the breakdown of ozone molecules. So these CFCs reach the ozone layer and start breaking them down. It is estimated that a single CFC molecule can lead to the destruction up to, of up to 100,000 ozone molecules. So um, what happened was beginning in the 1970s, atmospheric measurements began to detect alarming declines in the levels of ozone in the atmosphere. The destruction of the ozone is even more severe over the polar regions and more severe at certain times of the year. For a few weeks each year, an ozone hole forms over Antarctica. This hole is an area of very low ozone concentration. So the hole in the ozone, um, the biggest fear we have with that, so the reduction of the ozone um, levels will affect life on Earth because there will be more cases of skin cancers in humans, um, and it will affect those plants and photosynthetic organisms that we were talking about earlier, um, and it will modify the entire ecosystem. So... There was an international agreement um, to stop the production of CFCs by the end of 1995, and that has led to a 75% reduction in CFCs, and um, it hasn't gotten rid of them completely because the substitutes for CFCs are expensive. And thankfully, the developed countries of the world are contributing to an international fund to help developing countries make this change. It is thought that the ozone layer will start to build up again. So we're hoping that we will um, see the ozone layer recovering due to these um, changes that we've made in all uh, the production of certain chemicals. So another thing that we do, so besides just chlorofluorocarbons, um, we are increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a naturally occurring gas in the biosphere. We talked about it when we did cellular respiration. Um, plants use carbon dioxide as a source of carbon to build molecules of glucose during photosynthesis. Um, 
and animals and other heterotrophs use these molecules of glucose to fuel cellular respiration and give off carbon dioxide as waste products. So you'll remember that chemical equation in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide was taken in. In cellular respiration, um, carbon dioxide was given off. Additional carbon dioxide molecules are released into the atmosphere when fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and gas are burned. During the Industrial Revolution, humans began to increase the burning of fossil fuels. As a result, carbon dioxide levels have risen in the atmosphere by 30% since that time. So some, some scientists estimate that if current trends continue, by the year 2100, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will double what it was in 1850. So why should we be worried about the increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Like, what is the danger of this? Um, so Earth's atmosphere naturally traps heat from the sun. This is known as the greenhouse effect, and life on Earth depends upon its warming effect to protect the Earth from the cold of space. However, increased levels of carbon dioxide causes more heat to be trapped than is normal, and this has led to warming trends that threaten to change the climates on Earth. So, when you're hearing um, things about climate change or global warming, um, it's referring kind of to this research or what we understand of the greenhouse effect. If you look at other planets like Venus, the greenhouse effect is extreme there, and so the temperatures on Venus are really, really high. Um, so the same thing can happen on Earth. Um, if we increase our greenhouse effect, we actually increase the temperature um, of the Earth. So today, the average global temperature is about 0 0.6 degrees Celsius, or 1 degree Fahrenheit, higher than it was in 1860, and scientists expect additional increases of 2 degrees Celsius, or 4 degrees Fahrenheit, by 2050. Um, global warming is the term used to describe this increase in the average temperature of the biosphere. This increase will have global consequences to rainfall patterns and soil mo moisture. Sea levels will rise as more polar ice is melted by the increases in temperature. So those are the impacts we're looking at at our increased carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about the effect of population growth, because currently um, humanity is growing at an exponential rate, um, 7 billion, um, more than 7 billion right now. Um, by 2050, it is estimated that the human population will be 12.5 billion people. And basically what we have to figure out is what effect that's going to have on the planet and our management of the biosphere. So ozone levels are stabilizing, but as the human population grows, the use of fossil fuels will continue to increase. There will also be an increase in the clearing and burning of forests. Both of these will lead to an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and um, speed up the environmental change that we're seeing or the atmospheric change that we're seeing. Um, of all the water on Earth, only 3% is fresh water. Two-thirds of the human population already lack um, reliable source of fresh drinking water. And it is estimated that humans already use 40% of the net primary productivity of the Earth. If we double our use, many other organisms will be unable to survive. So the effect of human population growth is that there'll be more humans using fossil fuels, so carbon dioxide levels will increase. Um, our freshwater resources will be used up faster because there's more people um, to take care of and have to have access to fresh drinking water. Um, and then another thing is we will outcompete other species for those resources. And so we're actually going to see a lot of extinctions um, in the future. We already see quite a few of them uh, today. Um, and that is all I have for the human impact on the biosphere.